and this is your beautiful full, full underwing of that beautiful uh, Popendetta bird wing just beautiful and would you believe it, this one <laughs> never guess where this one was photographed Perth Zoo <laughs> in 1974 the education department met me I was teaching at Coonga Maya and the superintendent came to me and said Eric uh, we're starting up the zoo education center would you like to be the teacher there oh <laughs> would I <laughs> So from 1974 to 1984, I was the teacher at the Perth Zoo. And during that time, they brought in a butterfly room, house, whatever. And you could walk in and you had all these. But, and this one was photographed in there. I believe that has been closed since. It's unfortunately gone now. How lucky can you be being at a time? And here's one of the biggest butterflies in the world the bird wing, and that's why they call them bird wings, because they have very large wings. There it is. I showed you that one before. The Popendetta bird wing. And this is your blue triangle, not here, uh, but uh, this is a found, this one I photographed up in Queensland. There's quite a few of them. And in this big family called Papillionidae, which there's only 18 species, often some of them are called swallowtails, um, sword tails, uh, bird wings, etc. And, this is, and some of them are called triangles because of that colour, of the triangle colour there. Uh, just beautiful things. Now we come here, and if you go walking around from now on in the bush here and find mistletoe on trees, have a careful look at the leaves because this is the caterpillar of the wood white the wood white butterfly, uh, whose caterpillar, that's its caterpillar, eats the leaves of these beautiful uh, mistletoes that are there. And when it is pu forms a chrysalis and pupates, have a look at this. Isn't that just gorgeous? And that's here. And it's a larva, it's larva, the caterpillars feed on the leaves of mistletoe. The wood white, Delius agonippi, and it is just beautiful. Then we have the uh, Pieridae family, which is another family, Pieridae. And the Pieridae have, how many species in Pieridae? 31 different species of Pieridae. These are called the whites, the yellows, or the migrants. And this one, of course, you know is a yellow, and that's why it's called the yellow it's not emigrant, it's migrant. So you can correct that when you get home. <laughs> it's probably my talking over the, uh, the phone here. It's the yellow migrant, Cartopsila, uh, Gorgophony, and just beautiful things here. And that looks like a calatrix. Yeah, I think that's on a calatrix. This is your lemon yellow, another beautiful Cartopsila, Pomona. And these, all of the, it, this is good with the um, butterflies. If you can see its colour, you can put it into, basically into a family straight away. So if it's yellow or white, it's this particular family, the um, Pieridae. If it's brown, it belongs to the Nymphalidae. And if it's uh, big, it's the Papillionidae. And if it's blue and whatever, they belong to the um, other ones. And if it's dull, it's the darts and alls of the Hesperidae. So there we are. This is one of the Arguses. And uh, have you people heard of the peacock? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just the bird, the peacock. Um, have you any of you seen the peacock's tail? What colour is it? No, peacock's tails are black. <laughs> Oh, you didn't know those feathers that the peacock puts up and has all those bullseyes in them? That's not its tail. That's feathers out of its back. If you walk around behind the peacock, you can see his 19 feathers tail, only this big, and they're all black. On the peacock's display feathers, got these bullseyes. And one of our pheasants is called the Argus pheasant, who's got bullseyes on its... and. It is called the Argus pheasant because of those bullseyes. Look at the bullseyes here. But what are these for? 
to stop birds eating them because the bird comes along, oh goodness, what's that big thing looking at me? Thinking it's the eyes of some creature rather than a butterfly which is edible. Then we have the western brown. Now this is incredible, this is a very common one here. The western brown comes out here, you can see in January and February. And this is the female. Look at her colour, especially on the wingtips. Two bundles of white, uh, yellow and one bundle of white. Bullseyes on the hind wing. Female. Poor old male. <laughs> That's him. He comes out first. He, they emerge first. Anyone know why? Because as soon as a female comes out, you're the first one there. If the females come out first, it's likely you're going to get eaten by a bird. And so practically all the males come out and they start flying around, hoping that a female is going to come out soon. The grass, the caterpillars are grass eaters. And uh, the males come out and of course as soon as the females come out, they put out a pheromone. And girls, you, you know what perfume is, do you? That's what it is. They put on this perfume and the male with their antenna. Ooh, ooh, and the mate, and of course once they're mated she has to lay the eggs on the food plant. So there's your western brown male, and there's your western brown female. What a contrast. Both here in, the, uh, in our hills here. <coughs> These are the caterpillars of the Australian Admiral. Did I put it up there? Or not being put on here, but this is the Australian Admiral. This one was, uh, when I was working at the Perth Zoo, they had uh, lots of lawns and every week the lawn mowers used to go and cut all the lawn and they used to have these big piles of lawn clippings. And because I had an orchard at uh, Parkerville, which was gravel, and there's not much nutrient in gravel, I asked the zoo, may I take the uh, lawn clippings and I can rotary hoe it and dig it into the orchard and make the trees all happy? Uh, they said yes. Unknown to me, in amongst the things, they had this, what's that prickle thing you use stinging and get stung? Stinging nettles. Yeah. Would, and would you believe it, this caterpillar's food plant is stinging nettles. And of course I had these, I put all these lawn clippings in there and it wasn't long before the rains come and up came all these <laughs> stinging nettles and within a very short period of time I had practically all the Australian admirals in my orchard mating, laying eggs on the thing. That's the caterpillar. This is it getting, it's on the bird cage here, getting ready to form a chrysalis. And there's the chrysalis and it's actually forming inside the chrysalis there. This is on our bird cage at home. <coughs> there's the chrysalis, beautiful spiny thing. And you can see the silk that they spin here. So it's a silken one. They often usually have a little belt around them as well. And then out comes the admiral. And I think the next picture shows you the wings out and you can actually see, I think it's the brown spots on it. There, there they are. That's our Australian Admiral. And anyone here who sees the flowers of the balga, or balga, what do they call them now, grass trees? We know them as black boys. Of the balga or black boy flowers, these butterflies just love them. And you'll see tens of these feeding on the flowers of the black boy. So there's your underwing, sorry, the upper wing, and this is what's underneath on that beautiful uh, butterfly. <clears throat> and we have the common crow, not here, but up. I put these in so that you get an idea of just one of them. And although you can't see it, if ever you see a butterfly that has a black body with white spots, something funny is there. Because when you look at it, you say, hey, Eric, it's only got four legs. All of these butterflies that have black bodies with white spots on their body, when you see the adults, they appear to only have four legs. The first pair of legs are hidden inside the hairs of their body, but the second and third pair are fully grown, and hence you, they look as though they've got only four legs, but they actually have six. Two of them are non-functional. And this is in this big family called the uh, butterfly or crow family. 
Oh, this one. Ha! Keep your eyes open for this one. This one's very common. As you can see here, it's called the Painted Lady. Van oh! Did you, do you know any girls called Vanessa? Um, yes. Look what its name is. Vanessa. And Vanessa means butterfly. So all the girls whose name... We have a Vanessa here, have we? Ah, Vanessa, the butterfly. And anyone know the honeybee? Melissa. And poor old Rachel, she has to go and just... <laughs> anyone know what a Rachel is? It's a you. And worse is Rebecca, which is a heifer. And we're lucky to have all these Hebrew names given to uh, children because butterflies or Vanessas is a different thing, but from the, the ewes and the heifers were the most important members of the flock and that's why they were given to the girls in their family. So this is your painted lady and some of the, uh, if you're watching the TV, I think it was about two nights ago, they had a beautiful um, article on the, this migration, the, these butterflies have been found to travel over over thousands of kilometres in migration. And there's the underwings. And guess what flower that is? Your black boy, your balga, your balga flower. Um, by the way, for those who don't know, balgas belong to the lily group of plants. Th all their flowers are in threes. Three sepals, three petals, six stamens, and the seed box has got three seeds in them. Everything to do with threes. One of the talks I give are numbers in nature, because a lot of people don't know about this. So you're all mammals. I hope. <laughs> and mammal means milk gland. Now if you're a mammal, and you've got five digits here, and five digits there, your milk glands are in between your front legs, here. But if you've got four and four, three and three, two and two, one and one, your milk glands are in between your back legs. And if you're odd like a dog and a cat, who've got five here and four there, their milk glands run along their body. So in mammals you get this weird thing. Five and five milk glands here. Four and four, three and three milk glands down here. Odd ones, milk glands run along. Exception, one exception. Anyone know it? The pig. Pig is four and four. It's got four toes in the front, four toes in the back, and it walks on two toes. You've got two toes just up a little bit, but it's got four toes, four toes, but its milk glands run along the body. And I don't know whether that's why the Bible has it as a unclean animal. Is that what they call it? Something like that to do with pigs. Just something strange about mammals. We're talking about butterflies here. And here's your Vanessa again, your beautiful uh, painted lady and uh, just beautiful and these are relatively large and here we have the blue tiger um, this is one of the members of the nymphala day uh, just beautifully marked here look at the spotting on the body four leg well four big legs ah oh, this is the one here this is common here this is the meadow argus and remember that argus means that bullseye which is on that bird the argus pheasant the bullseyes on the peacock's display feathers and bullseyes on here. And that's why it's called the Meadow Argus. The Argus is the bullseye uh, naming here. Would you believe it, when we went to Christmas Island, oh, what year was it, Margaret? 2010? So about eight years ago when we went to Christmas Island, this was the only butterfly we found on Christmas Island. Luckily, it's food plants there as well. There we have the blue Argus. Look at all those bullseyes on there. Beautiful little one here. Uh, the clipper butterfly. These are just some of the beauties that come out in the butterfly world. Uh, the no brand crow. Again, black body, white spots, four legs, apparently four legs only on these. And these crows belong to this big Nymphalidae, which means the browns. And uh, there's a whole range of those here. Uh, Idiopsis darce. Uh, again, four spots. Quite a lot of the Nymphalidae, these browns, have all, apparently 
four big legs and two little ones that you can't, well, you can see them later. That's what they come into. This is the leaf brown butterfly, Melanitis. And as uh, when I was talking to Rachel about this, this thing gets onto the ground, folds its wings up and keeps still, and you'd swear it was a leaf. And uh, hence, uh, it's a pretty big butterfly. Uh, not here, no. This one I photographed in Queensland somewhere. Oh, this is your lesser wanderer. Now, the wanderer butterfly is the one that I showed you with all the um, uh, mating, laying eggs, eat the caterpillar, etc. That was the wanderer. This is the lesser wanderer, found here in the hills here. And uh, this is just beautiful. Again, spotted body. <clears throat> And now we come to these palm darts just to show you the difference between a, male, a female here and look at the male. Female, male. This one was photographed in our backyard at um, Sawyer's Valley. So the palm darts actually were brought over here because people sold palms in the uh, nurseries and they brought whole palms over, little ones in pots from Queensland. Of course, the butterflies already laid the eggs there. No one checked to find out whether the eggs are there. And we came here and all of a sudden people said, hey, what's this butterfly? Turned out to be the palm dart. And he, oh, this one here, this is the one that uh, Rachel wrote in the newsletter, seems to have a beak. Look at it. And it's called the Australian beak, Libethia, uh, Jeff Royer, um, only found on the Gibb River Road. And for those who are interested, when I was reading up about this earlier on, no one knows what its babies are. So here's something that someone could actually do a little bit of research on. It's a tropical one, and that's the beautiful Australian beak. One species only in its family in Australia. That's it. Eric, yes? Can we advance your technological? Can you go back? Yes. <laughs> Can you just use that to point to where that beak is? The top, yeah, yeah. Oh, there, there we are. There's the beak in there. Thank you for that. What a clever little device. <laughs> and this just shows you that in the blue, in the Lyceanidae, which are the blues and coppers, uh, this is the upper wing. That's what's underneath. Underneath, on top. And look what I photographed them on. Cactuses. Pinned specimens. <laughs> and here, a mating pair. Another mating pair, or yeah, another mating pair. Beautifully camouflaged these. These blues and coppers are just wonderful. This is one of them is showing you what the underwings look like. Underwings again, the Acelius blue. In amongst our, looks like... Um, Calathamnus, yes. Now we come to a very strange group of ants, oh, blah, 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 strange group of butterflies. Normally, after mating, the female goes along and finds the food plant and lays her eggs on the food plant, and when the caterpillars hatch out, they eat it. This particular group from here onwards, no. Mrs. Butterfly pregnant flies around until she finds her food plant. She doesn't lay her eggs there. She goes fly, looking around to find out, are there any ants' nests here of a particular... Oh, here's one. And then she does a suicidal thing. She lands on the ground near the ants' nest, walks up to the ants' nest, and the ants, you would think, butterfly, oh, good, we've got tucker. But they don't touch the butterfly. And she puts her abdomen into the hole of the ants' nest, and then she lays her eggs one at a time. The ants come up and pick up the eggs and take them down into the egg room. More? Yeah. Any more? That's okay. And the ants, would you look, at, look after the baby eggs? When the little babies hatch, we don't know how they're told, the ants pick up the little caterpillar, walk out, climb up to the food plant which is near their nest, puts the baby onto the food plant and says, uh, eat and I'll guard. When the sun comes up in the morning, Betty buys, there you are, goes to sleep. Next morning, next night, 
be the eating time, come out here, up on the Pueblo, there you are. Now you might be saying, hey, what's going on here? I found out, well, there's this liaison. The ants know that these caterpillars, if they tickle them a certain way, they bring up this stuff called honeydew, and it's like you having your cup of coffee, or your drink of whiskey or whatever. <laughs> and the ants actually look after the babies, and here, when the babies have got shed their skin several times, four or five or six ants have to be involved in carrying the caterpillar <laughs> up to the food plant. And when it's formed, it's chrysalis, they actually, because the chrysalis is pretty big, they actually open up the entrance to their thing so that the butterfly can come out, pump up its wings, and off it goes with a thank you. And these are called the ant liaison butterflies, and we've got several of them. I'm going to show you a couple of them here. There's one here, the dingy jewel. Beautiful little one here. This one's down from here down to Albany. And the uh, beautiful uh, one called the Western Jewel. This is him. And this one is only found up near um, uh, a suburb beginning with W up near Wanneroo. Wood, uh, woodland? Woodvale. 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 Only found at Woodvale because it's at Woodvale. Two things are there. One, the food plant of this one's caterpillar. And two, the species of ant, which the female has to lay. Uh, they both occur there. And guess what the government don't know? And they're probably going to say, let's go and put another suburb in here. Bulldoze the lot and these things are going to say, hey, um, uh, where's my food plant ants, please? Oh, they've all been bulldozed. Oh, but, uh, well, you're only a butterfly. See, we've got to start thinking. These depend upon those two things, food plants and there. And we've got, this is why we've got to go and put out a lot more reserves to save these beautiful... Look, look at them. That's the underwings of these beautiful western jewel. The underwing, just beautiful. What's the food plant of them? Sorry? What's the food plant at Woodvale? Woodvale. At Woodvale there is a, a pea plant called Davisia, yeah. which is the bitter pea. And for those who don't know, Davies has got a red pea, very small flower, about a fingernail-sized flower. If you pick its leaf, oh, and that's why they call it the bitter pea. What's the species name? Davisia. Davisia. Oh, there's about four, four species. And there's also Jacksonia, you know, the other pea plant, Jacksonia. Both of these, all of these dingy jewels and whatever, all lay their, on their food plant are pea plants. Davisia and um, Jacksonia. You know, that's the beautiful Western Jewel. And now we come onto the Lycaena. Well, they're still in that same family. And these are the tiny butterflies. Wings, not, or the wings are not much bigger than my thumb. Very small. In fact, if you've got clover at home, these are these little grey, light bluey things you see fluttering around near the ground. That's the one that comes to clover, another pea plant. That's why they call these the pea blue. There you are, look at that. But that is only this big. It's quite small. And these are very common here in the hills here. <clears throat> this is the grass blue, Zazina, and this is a mating pair. But look at that camouflage. You get these on the ground, you'd never see them unless you saw them moving at all. These are quite small butterflies, by the way. Oh, there you are. Danke schön. <laughs>